Uh, wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Yes, yeah, just a, yeah, um, was in touch with uh, Rhonda during the week, and uh, yes, and perhaps was saying Michelle's uh, operation went very well, a few little complications, but things, things went very well, so that's uh, a great answer to prayer. Uh, yes, so food hampers will happen again on Wednesday. Uh, if you're able to come and help out uh, at Rivers Church of Christ, 120 Ant Street in Kalanga, uh, food gets packed and sorted, uh, sort of between... 11.30 and 1ish and then about 1.30, quarter to 2, we'll bring up about 10 or so food hampers here on Wednesday and give them out between 3 and 4. And we could have probably given out 40 hampers last week, but there'll probably be about 10 or so this week, just depending on food. So if you're able to open up the church about 2 or come and transport hampers and help me, that would be lovely. So that would be good if we could do that. Let's come to a time of prayer today. <clears throat> Father God, I thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you that Michelle went through, yes, a major surgery and, and thank you for her mum and dad and others and doctors and teams are surrounding her and Lord, we thank you for a good outcome for her. Lord, for others that are going through tests and trials and Father God, we, we just pray that you make a way, Lord God. Father, as a church community, as we reach out and connect with people with many different needs, in many different situations, from many different walks of life. Lord, I thank you that you are providing. Lord, you're providing food and help and care. And Lord, we can be your hands and feet here in this place. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for projects like Operation Christmas Child and collecting of stationery and toys and goods uh, over these months, Father God. We thank you for that. That as we pack shoe boxes towards the end of the year and give... And they head off to third world countries and children are blessed through receiving a gift that they may have never received before. Lord, we thank you that we can be part of your wider work across the globe. Thank you for GMP. Thank you for the many other missions and things that we support here from this church. Lord, I thank you for people's generosity and faithfulness. And we praise you for yesterday, a great day as we gathered and cleaned and mowed and cut and transported uh, rubbish and Bushes, Father God, we thank you that we were able to do that and just to honour you here in this place as we shine our light for you beyond these walls and across these streets and across this community. Lord, thank you for the people that you bring across our path that we can share your message of hope and love with. Lord God, I thank you that you indeed are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And Lord, may we continue to see your hand provide in coming weeks and days. In Jesus' name, Amen. So what do you preach after Easter? I don't know. Oh, yes, I do. Um, thank you, the two of you. Okay. My message today is called The Lord Our Provider, Jehovah Jireh. I'm sure we all have a story of God's provision. I'm sure we all have a story of where God provided in some way. Maybe it was just very practical. Maybe it was miraculous. But God provided in some way. This Jehovah Jireh is a concept in God's word. But where does it come from? It comes from the story of Abraham. And we'll have a little look at that shortly. That the Lord will provide. The Lord will make a way. God will do the impossible. He'll step in at just the right time, which I am glad about and I'm sure you are as well. Picking up towards the end of the story, it's in Genesis chapter 22. Just two verses there, 13 and 14 up on the screen for you or in your Bible or however you want to look at that. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and looked at the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. This is the name of God that came about through Abraham's story and situation. Abraham gave God the name Jehovah Jireh. 
to the place where the Lord had provided for him as he was about to sacrifice his son. If you know the story, Abraham and Sarah were very old. God had promised that he would have a son and his son would be, and he would be the father of a great nation and, and, and the great promises and covenants to Abraham. But they were very old and they were very childless. But God provided Isaac, a son to Abraham and Sarah in their old age. And then God said, I want you to take him up this mountain and sacrifice him. Oh, of course. God provided salvation. God provided a ram caught in a thicket. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. God provided a way and restored life and saved this son. We see it through the crucifixion. We see it through the Easter narrative. Calvary covers it all. Jehovah Jireh, God our provider, as he sent his one and only son who stood in our place. This is one of the most powerful names used for God. He knows what we need long before we do. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but God does, and He holds His life, our life, in His hands. And we can be confident that God will provide, that He'll make a way, that He'll open a door. That He goes before you and He goes before me. Abraham was obedient and willing to sacrifice his son. But God provided a way out. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, from the Message Bible, God can do anything you know, far more than you could ever imagine, or guess, or request, in your wildest dreams. God can do anything you know. God provided for Abraham, but not without first Abraham being obedient. And trusting that God knew what he was doing. As strange as it seemed. As dumb as it seemed. He faithfully trod up that mountain with his son. Prepared to sacrifice him. Abraham was obedient and trusted God 100%. Was his faith in God that helped him through that ordeal, no doubt. To get that sacrifice ready. To make the trip. And God stepped in. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, our provider, the Lord provides. In the book of Hebrews, towards the back of the New Testament, in chapter 11, verse 17, by faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. What a hard thing to do. We may be in a desperate situation where it all seems impossible. There seems to be no way out. But we know that we can be sure that God will provide. Whatever we need to get through, whatever we need to do, whether it's something practical or something spiritual, God will provide a way, even though it may look hopeless. Maybe through a friend, maybe through a family member, maybe through a, a situation changing, God will provide. God can use you and God can use me. Maybe we'll be an answer to prayer. Maybe we'll provide a way. Yes, you and me. Maybe God will use us to the answer to someone's prayer. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it, is your power, when it is in your power to do so. Don't hold back. 
Act, help, love, care, make a way, make a change. Provide for someone in need. We all have our favourite TV shows, don't we? <coughs> we all enjoy different things. Maybe it's a drama, maybe it's a mystery, maybe it's some trashy, trashy soap opera that you don't need to tell me about. <coughs> but you know when the words come up, to be continued, that something amazing, shocking, astounding has just happened, and you're going, ah! and then bang, to be continued, and you go, ah, no! I've got to wait till next season. I'm going to wait six months till that comes back. To be continued flashes up on the screen and you're panic stricken. But thankfully today we have Google and YouTube, so we're right. And Netflix. And Netflix. And you can watch it all in one day if you're sick in the head. No, no. <laughs> to be continued. Really? We're left hanging. Most of us can't wait for that next episode or the next week. What thing will happen? That unexpected thing. We know the story hasn't finished. We know it's not ended. It's to be continued. Friends, we serve a God, a to be continued God who will provide. Ecclesiastes 3.11 He has made everything beautiful in His time. Everything, surely not. Yes, everything beautiful in His time. And sometimes we're in the middle and sometimes we're waiting and sometimes it's dark and sometimes it's scary and sometimes we're wondering, God, what are you going to do? You've said you will provide but I just don't see it. And so we hang on and we pray and we wait for our to be continued God, for that next door and that next chapter and that next thing as we take a step in faith and say, God, I'm believing and hanging on to you. An interesting fact, there's no word in the Hebrew Bible for tragedy. So how did the writers of the Old Testament Get that across in stories like Joseph's betrayal by his brothers or David committing adultery and murder and the, his, the Israelites going through exile and slavery. There seems to be a thinking that if things weren't beautiful, that it wasn't their time yet. In other words, if things looked tragic or hopeless, the story wasn't over. It was to be continued. And Joseph says to his brothers in Genesis 50, verse 20, the brothers who'd sold him to slavery, the brothers who hated him and left him for dead. In Genesis 50, verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what now is being done, the saving of many lives. Jehovah Jireh, our provider steps in and makes a way at just the right time for us. The saving of many lives. We can see it throughout the New Testament in many different stories. God turns tragedy into triumph and tests into testimonies. Things look hopeless, but God comes through. Jesus steps in at just the right moment. He calms the storm. He meets the disciples upon the water. An adulterous woman in John 8, is, is her, her life is replaced with dignity and grace and hope. A, a lady who suffered for 12 odd years, is, is, her life's restored as she reaches out her hand and touches Jesus' garment and, and is healed and, and made whole. Peter, Peter who denied Jesus, is restored. Restored by his Saviour. Each story looked unchangeable, each story looked hopeless, and Jesus appears 
and steps in and meets them at their point of need and makes a difference. Up on the screen there, never let the presence of a storm <coughs> cause you to doubt the presence of God. Do not doubt the presence of God. Let him step into that storm and stand with you and make you strong. Paul says in Romans 8.28, In all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purposes. Romans 8.28, In all things God works for the good of those who love him. He's called you and he's called me. To be part of his plan. To be part of the answer. Everything is redeemable. God makes everything beautiful in his time. And that's where the struggle is for us. In, it's the in his time bit <coughs> that we struggle with. So if there are things in our life that don't look great today, right now, let us be encouraged that it is a process. It is a process. Run your race with purpose in, in every step that you take. Because eternity matters, let us run hard. Give Him your all. No regrets, no looking back, for he is the to be continued God. Take a step and move forward. By his power, leave no word unsaid, no deed undone, no hope unshared. Because our faith moves mountains, our prayers calm storms, our words give life. Our hands, friends, bring healing. When our feet deliver the good news of Jesus Christ, let us stay faithful. Let us push on. Life is too valuable. Our call is too great. God is too good. Let us not waste our life on things that don't matter. Let us be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God and trained by His Word. Trials cannot stop you. People cannot break you. Money cannot buy you. Haters cannot silence you. Demons cannot defeat you. Because your life is in His hands. And heaven is our home. We live, friends, for the glory of God, not for the applause of men. For I believe we will see lives restored and transformed through the name of Jesus Christ. Whether you're in a storm, whether there's sickness, whether it's just hard going at the moment, whether it's just confusing and hard and black, and for the story is not over. It is to be continued. God hasn't shut the book. He hasn't put down the pen. He hasn't turned off the light. He hasn't cancelled the show. He hasn't cancelled the story that he's writing with my life and your life. For God is on his way. Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. Let Psalm 23 verse 4 speak to us as I finish this morning. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God bless you. Amen.